Chapter 4, Mishnah 8. The Mishnah teaches what a person should do in the event that he cannot fulfill the mitzvah of shofar unless he violates rabbinic laws. To do the mitzvah of shofar and Rosh Hashanah, we may not go beyond the tchum, the Shabbos and Yom Tov boundary, even though we will thus lose the opportunity to fulfill the mitzvah. Nor may we remove a pile of rubble that is on top of a shofar, nor may we climb a tree to retrieve the shofar, nor may we travel to hear the shofar by riding on an animal or swimming in water. If we have a shofar that needs to be repaired, we may not cut it, either with something that is forbidden by rabbinic decree, such as a knife, or with something that is forbidden by a negative commandment of the Torah, such as a saw. But if one wanted to rinse a shofar with water or wine to improve its sound, he may do so, because that is not considered a violation of rabbinic prohibition against repairing a utensil, of the rabbinic prohibition against repairing a utensil. Although we may not blow the shofar when Rosh Hashanah falls on Shabbos, as taught in Mishnah 1, the following is permitted. We do not prevent children from blowing the shofar even when Rosh Hashanah falls on Shabbos. Rather, if they are mature enough to be trained, we may even occupy ourselves with the task of teaching them to blow the shofar until they learn. In order to fulfill the mitzvah of shofar or any mitzvah, one must have intent to fulfill it. See chapter 3, Mishnah 7. Our Mishnah elaborates on this law. If one is preoccupied with some other matter and he blows the shofar without the intent to fulfill the mitzvah, he has not fulfilled his obligation. And one who hears the shofar from one who is preoccupied with another matter has also not fulfilled his obligation. Since the person actually performing the mitzvah did not have the proper intent, another person cannot fulfill his obligation by listening to him.